Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to BNB Anime. I am Blue, that is Brad. Today we are both dying. What? No. <laughs> no. Why Why would we be dying? I, I, uh... Yeah. It's a good day. Everything's fine. Everything's totally fine. Yeah. Uh-huh. We didn't cry. Or I didn't cry. No, no, never. No, I, I actually didn't cry. Because my oh? brain turned to very specific places and I found myself in a wormhole of trying to get out of them whilst watching this film. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, sick, sick, I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so plans changed, by the way. We are no longer covering Anohana yeah. this week because life is hectic, so instead we turned to our trusty, handy-dandy, break glass in case of emergency Makoto Shinkai button. Yes. Which I am very thankful for. That is a very handy break glass button. It's a very handy button, yeah. Because I, I I had a blast. It was fun. Yeah. Oh, I just dropped my pen lid. Way to go! Right. Oh, I'm leaning to get it. I got it. We're good. Um, That's being left in, by the way. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, so The Garden of Words is what we watched this week. It's a short film. It's only 45 minutes. Um, but yes, we basically, I don't know. Lots of stuff happened for both Brad and I over the past little while. But also, what were we supposed to cover? My brain is just gone. On Ohana? Thank because you. of the twins, Anohana. so they're going to be yes. disappointed gonna that be we still haven't gotten there, but it's fine. They're going to be mad at me, but that's a, that's okay. They're like At this point, we've been friends for like 10 years, so if they want to be mad at me, that's fine. I don't care. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> uh, basically, that Anohana is really sad and... Like, sometimes you just don't want to watch sad. Speak for yourself. Well, yeah. So we replaced it with other sad by watching The Garden of Words. <laughs> yeah. Did you watch it subbed or dubbed, by the way? I watched it subbed. Oh. Mm. Like, solely solely for that last little scene before the credits, I would yeah. highly recommend checking out the dub. Yeah, just I'm because actually... Oh, it, go ahead. It, it's the voice acting that broke me. Like, right. that's literally all it was, was the voice acting. I It was just top notch some of the mm. best i've ever seen so very very pleased yeah i'm actually very curious about the dubbed because some of the way that this film and i'm not sure if it was just the trans i haven't seen the dubbed obviously so i don't know if it was the translation or if it was the actual script and the way that it was written but some of this film can come across in a way that isn't like appropriate <laughs> um but some of it's also like, okay, so I'm going to explain the basic premise of the film. We're kind of doing things out of order, but I feel like I have to to get the point across. Um, basic premise of the film is about a young 15-year-old lad um, who runs into and makes friends with an older woman. And it's kind of seen, at, like, one of the genres that it's classified as is a romance, but I don't know if this is a spoiler or not. I'm going to call it a loose spoiler so be aware like it's kind of i think you can kind of figure it out he ends up developing like an emotional attachment to her and sometimes it can come across as like inappropriate but in other ways like once we get into proper spoiler warning territory i'll talk about it more it's like the way that she responds is i, I can't really talk about it without spoiling i don't know i'm having a hard time <laughs> Totally understandable, totally yeah. understandable. Before we get yeah. into that, where's our typical vanity at? I know, we didn't do vanity. I'm hurting, my foot hurts. I greatly apologize. Your workload is incredibly <laughs> massive right now, so you have my greatest condolences. Thanks, bud. <laughs> but I what feel that, you? though. I've got a massive headache. Mm -hmm. We're both in pain today. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Everything's fine. Everything's Either totally ends. fine. Yeah. However, what? I will say... Yeah. We got exciting shit to talk about. We do. Fucking Chainsaw Man! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so excited. We got the latest trailer yesterday at time of recording. Yeah. And I haven't been able to... I haven't been able to shut up about Chainsaw Man for a long time, but especially after the anime got announced, I've been having an absolute blast getting caught up on the manga <laughs> and just overall getting to just get ready to experience one of the best anime in a very long time because MAPPA is putting all of their stock into it. Mm. Fuck off outside, I'm being important right now. Anyway, and they have also said they're not censoring a damn thing. So, oh, okay. 
Shit's going to be great. Shit's going to be a whole lot of fun. Yeah, well, I think it's kind of standard in the community that it's known that the manga is, like, the light novel is the most graphic, the manga is still pretty graphic, and then the anime adaptation is the least graphic. Well, you know, in like, this case, I don't see how the light novel could even remotely touch the manga, because the manga is fucking brutal. Yeah, I guess it just depends on what's written for first i mean obviously there's a different level of graphic between a visual and uh like a written i'm about to find um, out if there is a light novel yeah there is not no okay so then obviously the manga is the most graphic yeah uh, <laughs> but yeah i think i think that's kind of the way it is a standard is that normally the written works are the most graphic but obviously like that depends on how you interpret graphic i guess because like if you're if you're a visual like, if you're very interested in visual stuff, like, I, I tend to be more of an auditory learner and an auditory, like, auditory entertainment I really enjoy. But, like, if you're a visual person, then you would obviously find something like the manga or the anime more graphic, I guess. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I think, uh, I think a lot of it just kind of depends on preferences. Yeah. But I know, at least in my case, I'm a, I'm a big fan of either. Like, and mm-hmm. I don't necessarily have a preference on, like, auditory versus visual whenever it comes to learning, because I'm mm-hmm. much more hands-on than anything. Mm, okay, you're a tactical learner. Interesting. Pretty much. So, therefore, it kind of takes a little bit of both, and then me actually doing it. Yeah. Or it's at least seeing enough for me to get kind of like a general concept. And then you've got the case of taking over like our thumbnails and videos for all of this and then having to figure out how to do that mm. with zero help so i'm literally just fumbling my way through it mm-hmm. so it it's fun i'm i'm figuring it out i can't complain too awful much so i can't complain at all i think the thumbnails look great big preach yeah <laughs> yeah and and shameless promo for the youtube channel go check it out there's cool shit on there brad's doing cool shit yeah, I'm I'm having a great time. Anime Island is up. We've got more episodes of that coming. I've got more that I need to record. Just things aren't lining up. However, the episodes that are already out, go check them out because it's yeah. some of my best friends, blue included. So go go check yeah. those out. Yeah, it's cool shit. Go do it. Go yeah. Look at the things. Um, and then Brad worked hard on them. Show yeah. the appreciation for Brad. Yeah, <laughs> gib gib all the appreciation. Yes. I love. Make make the god complex grow. It yeah, needs it. it needs to. I feel like I feel like it's shrunk a little, and we need to like increase it. So before we get into the topic of the Garden of Words, I do have one other dub topic to discuss. <gasps> okay. The devil's a part timer. Ah, okay. I mean, so I know the last time you and I spoke because it's been a minute. I still wasn't sure on the animation style of the anime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm used to it now. I'm having a great time. Ah, uh, okay, good. However, since it has been such a long gap, listening to the voice actors get back into the roles, especially the dub, which is how I initially watched The Devil's a Part-Timer, mm-hmm. has been a lot of fun, but also the jokes hit so much harder in the dub than it does in the sub. Interesting. So I I will highly recommend that whenever it comes time to cover it, it you should totally watch both, just Solely for the fact of the jokes just hit so much better. Yeah, I've found um, in general that tends to be the case, but you occasionally get a really, really talented translator in the subtitles that makes shit work. Mm -hmm. Well, Um, there's a lot of stuff in Food Wars that doesn't hit well in the dub as it mm, does the sub. Agreed, yeah. And I noticed that with a lot of things, like stuff, especially with like alliteration and whatnot, just works Mm. a lot better in Japanese than it does in English. Mm Mm-hmm. However, whenever things feel like they're kind of sort of loosely scripted, so they have a lot more fun to play, or Mm. whenever you have actors and actresses who are incredibly talented and play well off of one another, and things are just able to flow, yeah, shit can just come off really well. And the chemistry between Mal, Emmy, and Chiho in this are just absolutely wonderful, Mm -hmm. to where I absolutely cannot wait to be able to hear more of it i've been i realize i said that this is going to be a filler season of anime however the stuff that's going hard like overlord the devil's a part-timer and licorice recoil they are yeah. all absolutely wonderful by the way mm-hmm. licorice recoil i think you should do for one of your episodes of first impressions friday because yeah. it's wonderful i'm having an absolute blast with it it came out of nowhere and it seems to be taking the top of everybody's weekly list of best anime of the season. Mm-hmm. 
It's so good. Good. I'm glad. So yeah, there's my there's my rant of everything that I'm watching week to week Yay. because I I can't shut up about anime. It, it's my identity at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Is who I am. Uh, hello, nice to meet you. I am anime. Yes, I'm yeah. I'm weeb. I, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about that isn't super anime related, but it is content media related. Uh huh. I saw a play. Oh, did you? Yeah. So a friend of mine, um, just came up to me the other day and was like, "Hey, do you have a free evening, um, this past Thursday?" Um, and and I was like, "Yeah, why?" Um, and they're like, "Ah, oh, I have an extra ticket to go see." a play. Do you want to come? And I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I went to go see a play called And Juliet, which is a spin-off slash retelling of Romeo and Juliet. I guess you figured that probably from the title. I was about to ask, so you beat yeah. me to it. Mm-hmm. And the reviews were very good. We both went into it completely blind. All we knew was that it was probably about Romeo and Juliet and that it was a musical. That was all we knew. And <laughs> it was fun. It was a good time. Uh, but uh-huh. there are some plot lines in there that I'm just not sure about. Uh huh. Yeah, so um, p- plus points. Soundtrack, impeccable. They uh, chose popular songs from the 90s slash 2000s. Going from anywhere from like NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, all the way up to like Katy Perry. Okay. So good range of, of fun, nostalgic music. Very much enjoyed. Singers, uh, the actors, actual vocals, incredible. Very good. The plot was very okay. I'm putting full spoiler warning out there in case you wanted to go see the show. Um, I don't think there's any film or book adaptations. I think it was straight from a script to a play. Um, but yeah, okay, so it's basically Shakespeare and his wife, who is named Anne Hathaway, actually was, you know, Anne Hathaway, are, like, she's, like, mad. She's like, what the fuck is this ending? They kill each other and that's it? Like, okay, great. They kill themselves? Great. She's like, Juliet should live on in this, like, girl power moment. Romeo's dead. Juliet should live on. And they're like, okay, so... Juliet gets aged up. She's now in her 20s. She's got to go to Paris. She gets engaged to a new man. She's, like, living her own life, right? Then there's, like, side character development and a whole bunch of story. But the the whole time during the first act, they're constantly talking about how much of a player and a douchebag Romeo is. And he's, like, this 15-year-old kid that committed death, you know? Uh-huh. And I'm sitting there and I'm, like, they're making fun of him? Like... I don't I don't feel entirely comfortable with this. And then some of the jokes are absolutely hilarious. It is a comedy. Some of the jokes are really funny. That, I was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about it. He ends up coming back to life. And then he's, like, chasing after it. The end of the play, though, goes, uh, Juliet's like, oh, my God, I'm so, like, mad at myself. Like, I'm such a horrible person. You know, she has that, like, that moment of the character being like, I am a bad person. And then um, the nursemaid. Ends up singing a song to her of, like, you're so perfect, like, let's, don't worry, you're perfect to me, like, it's fine. And she has that moment of, like, okay, yeah, I actually am, like, a cool person, it's fine. And then Romeo has his moment of, like, I'm a bad person, I'm a douchebag, and everyone just is, like, yeah, you are. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm watching this, and I'm, like, this, it was, okay, full disclosure, it was written by a male. This feels like a man trying to write girl power. You know? That's what it felt like. It was like, men, screw them. Who are they? They can all die. We don't need them. That's what it felt like. I was watching this and I'm like, you're talking about... I know you age them up, but they're teenagers. And they... Like, this is so messed up. (laughs) Anyways, I saw that. It was fun. I I very much enjoyed the night. The play, though... The the fun stuff of the play? Great. The actual... The main storyline when you get down to the nitty gritty... Awful. Horrible. Didn't enjoy it. The play? Fun. <laughs> there you have it, folks. If yeah. you want a fun time that's not literary accurate, yeah. It. Well, I, okay. I'm going to just continue my rant for a couple more seconds here because I always interpreted Romeo and Juliet as satire. As in, like, look at this crazy situation about all of these idiots and these teenagers that have been, you know so emotionally devastated that they don't know how to handle anything. This is what we should not do. You know, it's like a PSA of don't be an idiot, you know? Isn't that a lot of Shakespeare's work, though? Yeah. Satire? Like, isn't that how most of his stuff was made? Similar to how a lot of Ghibli films can be taken as satire? Yeah, I think so. 
But the way that this play was set up was was Shakespeare and his wife taking the play as completely serious. It's like the tragedy, this is such a beautiful romance story. And it's like, no, it's not. He's literally pointing at this and being like, don't be an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's my rant. Going on, another romance story about two people that are also aged different because that's one thing as well that they just casually glossed over in that play was that Romeo was uh, that was that Shakespeare was 18 when he married his 26 year old wife and yet she's mad at him throughout the entire play for being childlike anyways um <laughs> but now we've got our homie that's 16 going on 17 and a 27 year old woman I had 15 in the subtitles oh the dub made it come across as he was in his junior year and then going into his senior year since because typically in Japanese high schools you work on your college like career plan mm. your junior year and then your senior year is where you start like actually taking all of your entrance exams and stuff like that so yeah. therefore timeline wise it suited more 16 going on 17 yeah I had 15 going on 16 in the subtitles but ages like, were never written. discussed in yeah. the dub except for her age her age she was 27. Yeah. yeah, she was 27, and I was like, oh, I'm going to be 27 in, like, two weeks. Holy shit. <gasps> Happy birthday to Brad. Birthday coming up real birthday. soon. Very soon. Yeah. Um. Cool. Okay. So, background, do you have any? Uh. Yes. Makoto Shinkai. That's all you need. <laughs> that's all you need to know. Okay. That, that's quite literally it. Makoto Shinkai wrote, directed... Mm-hmm. And edited the film. He didn't animate it like some of his works, but he did pretty much everything but the mm. animation. The film was actually animated by Comix Wave Films, who is the studio that does all of his works. Mm. Pretty much outside of the works that he did on his own. And came out in 2013 and 46 minutes long. Yeah, yeah, it's got a short runtime. One thing that I find that's quite interesting is that Toho Animation is a producer for this film. Yeah, that is interesting, but also a lot of films are actually uh, distributed by Toho. Mm, that makes sense. So that's not necessarily... Super unusual. Uh, yeah, because I think Toho kind of handles a lot of like international distribution. Mm, that makes sense. Unless Funimation handles it, and so I guess now in this place, Crunchyroll. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you want to watch this film, you can find it on Netflix, depending on your region. So maybe try the Where the uh, fuck VPN. did you find this on Netflix? Because I couldn't find it on US or Canadian Netflix. I had to pay for it. UK, I'm assuming? Uh, I actually don't remember what country I jumped into. One of them. I was okay. around. Yeah. Because I'm, again, I maybe was confused. Japan. Maybe I was in Japan. Typically, Japanese Netflix doesn't have subtitles, though. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I was just asking purely out of curiosity because yeah, I, don't know. Like I, don't I said remember, I, I, don't <laughs> I straight up. I was uh, on my laptop, so I can't even check. But oh yeah, because I popped into Canada because I was like, hmm, maybe it's in Canadian Netflix, and it wasn't. So instead, I just had to rent it through iTunes. Which iTunes on a PC trying to watch a film don't do it. It no. likes to buffer. I had yeah. to. So literally on the bit that made me cry with mm. like them on the staircase. Yeah. The next scene, it paused, like, right after that and buffered for so long, I had to restart iTunes. Oh, no. I was mad. I bet. <laughs> I was like, this literally just ruined that entire bit for me. I mean, it didn't because I was crying, but I was yeah. like, oh, I'm so upset. <laughs> yeah, you can also apparently find it on High Dive, so if you have High Dive. Oh, that makes sense because it's a Sentai title. That, that makes so much sense. Just to... Uh, for the viewers at home and also for Brad, if you go on my anime list and you check out um, whatever it is that you want to watch and you scroll down to the very bottom of like the side column where it says all the information about the film and the statistics, at the very bottom it has a streaming platforms section and it will show you different platforms that it is able to be streamed on. Does it show you regions? Uh, it doesn't, but it does have an asterisk over ones of like, for instance, this one it says... Um, maybe unavailable in your region for Netflix, but High Dive, it doesn't have an asterisk by it. Oh, uh, that makes sense. And again, the fact that it's a Sentai Filmworks thing, immediately, as soon as I saw the Sentai thing, I was like, I wonder if it's on High Dive, but at this point it was too late. I already paid my four bucks, so I had to, I had to get my four bucks worth out of it, and I'm going to watch it again here in another day or so, at least while I have the thing, because... More people wanted to watch it. They just weren't able to pull up for it in the Discord. However, those that did pull up, we enjoyed it. It was a great time. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, my background is that it is rated a 7.91 out of 10 on my anime list, and an 8.02 out of 10 on Anime Planet, or a 4.01 out of 5. Um, it has a drop rate of 0.36%, which is low to average on uh, a movie, and uh, it's rated a PG-13. One thing that I find tricky is that it is under the genre of drama romance and slice of life. The romance section specifically I feel like should be switched to more of a coming of age thing just because when we get into the plot line more I feel uncomfortable calling it a romance. Romance to me implies two-way affection and I don't think it should be in this context. Yeah I definitely think it kind of fits more of the coming of age mm. theme more than anything. Mm-hmm. However, I I don't know. Like, the film threw a lot of fucking curveballs all at once. Yeah. Which, again, Makoto Shinkai, I had a feeling it was coming. Yeah. So, yeah, let's let's jump into it. Spoiler chicken hats. Throw them on. Yeah. Basic premise. Teenage kid wants to be a shoemaker. He has to work for a living. His mom's kind of out of the picture his dad is completely out of the picture like never even mentioned he has an older brother that is uh moving out and gonna live with his girlfriend which kind of leaves him on his own in that sense he's also trying to figure out what he's actually gonna do with his life versus what he wants to do obviously the shoemaking um and uh he's a very hard-working kid one day he goes to a park while it's raining and he bumps into uh, a woman who he just enjoys the company of for a while and she likes to drink and mm -hmm. eat chocolate yep yeah. And then cycle, rinse, repeats, continues for mm -hmm. pretty much throughout the entire film until it doesn't. Yeah. So um, a lot of this film is just sitting in moments. It's just allowing the energy of the picture, the visuals, the sound, the music to lead the emotions. The dialogue doesn't have much of an impact into the story until the last couple scenes most of it is just purely like the story is heavily reliant on visuals which it's a makoto shinkai film so therefore all of your senses are being absolutely destroyed the entire time mm -hmm. with a, an absolutely lovely soundtrack stunning visuals for mm -hmm. it to have come out in 2013 which, again, is nothing new for Makoto Shinkai by any state of the imagination. But even a lot of the weather effects that came with were also very, very good. There was very little of it that actually came off as, like, 3D CGI work. Mm -hmm. So it was absolutely stunning from start to finish. And it does a good job of actually leading a lot of the story. Because, as Blue mentioned, you can't rely on a lot of the vocal work until later on. Mm -hmm. Because it also seemed like it took until later on in the film for like a lot of chemistry to be made with the characters. Mm -hmm. But then once that chemistry got established, everything just kind of took off yeah. from there and kind of spiraled into the real meat of the story mm -hmm. and just kind of went from there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say the visuals are so beautiful. It, it uh, made me look at them and study them. Like... <laughs> Well, you I, did just get a new drawing tablet, I did, so I, I, I totally did. understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I was like, oh, those are like layers. Like, there's a, I see that there's a very clear, in a lot of the shots, there's a very, very clear background, middle ground, and foreground, which I find very interesting. The saturation on the colors is just so stunning. And a, a lot of the scenes reminded me of, you know, those YouTube playlists where it's like jazz in another room or something, you know? And uh -huh. then they just have those like really, really pretty digital drawings that just have like one or two little moving parts. Mm -hmm. Like there was a, a shot in this that was just like a trickling stream. And I thought that would be fantastic for one of those backgrounds. And then there was another one of a pond with the raindrops hitting the pond. And I was like, yes, another one. And so, like, half of my brain while watching this film is just, like, visual stunning shots and just analyzing them. Yeah, it's so pretty. The rain effects in this are genuinely some of the best that I've ever seen in animation in general. Because you can physically see, like, where the drops rebound off of the ground and off of the surfaces mm -hmm. of things. Just so much work is put into it. And, again, I 
I feel like I'm beating a dead horse whenever it comes to the amount of just gushing that I can do over Shinkai films and animation. But at the same time, I truly believe that it should be marveled because of the amount of work and effort that goes into these films. And there's a reason why there's such a huge gap in between films is because the amount of work that goes into it and the amount of love that Shinkai has for a lot of the stuff that he creates. Mm hmm. Agreed. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't think that you can really properly describe how aesthetically pleasing these films are. And I think because this is a short film, it actually even aids to that more. Sometimes I find that with longer films that are so aesthetically pleasing, sometimes they can lose you over time in the um in like how much they've grabbed your attention because you're so lost in the beauty and stuff that they can relax more on the storyline like they did on this the storyline didn't pick up until quite far into the film but on a longer scale that doesn't always work you don't they don't always have your attention for uh uh the entirety of the film until everything picks up and it kicks in and quite often you can find yourself like getting lost like the immersion isn't quite as strong for this for the the 45 46 minute timeline runtime i actually think that was incredibly beneficial to having such a, a soft storyline and really focusing on the auditory and visual aspects of the film yes so yeah from my perspective whilst watching this film this is about a young lad who doesn't really have anybody to rely on because everyone's relying on him, who runs into an older woman who he's able to just, like, not with, you know? He can just, like, mm -hmm. have a moment where he can share food with her and they can chat or just sit in silence and just be in each other's company. And he doesn't have to work. He doesn't have to make food. He doesn't have to do anything. It's just his time where he can just shut off his brain and focus on his artistic endeavors and just be in the company of another person very peacefully. And being a 15-year-old lad, according to subtitles, 16 according to not, uh, <laughs> I feel like it makes perfect sense for him to have a crush on her as he develops, you know? Yes. And I actually, I think that that's not a bad thing to have in a film, having a teenager have a crush on someone older than them. I don't think that's a bad thing. And I think that... A lot of the time it's portrayed in very predatory and creepy ways. Uh, but that is very normal. It's very, very normal for teenagers to have crushes on people that are too old for them. And, you know, I feel like that's something that should be documented in a healthy way. I actually don't mind her character handling things the way that she did. For the most part, there are some things where I think that they could have been a little bit more clear on like with certain things of just being like having more of a I don't know more of a distinct line but she was going like I for the most part she does still to me act like an adult like that is trying to keep some distance you know and trying to create those boundaries mm -hmm. I do feel like though if these genders were switched there would be a lot more uproar about this film yeah I I agree yeah sorry my brain is fried no no it's okay uh but yeah, it, especially due to the dynamic between the two and the fact that she, being a teacher at the school, would obviously recognize his school uniform and yeah. know that he's skipping out on school mm -hmm. to hang out there and then developing the type of relationship that they have. And I'd use the term relationship loosely because, mm. again, the feelings are a lot more one-sided. However, on the flip side of that, like it's a very strange dynamic especially mm -hmm. considering what's going on there mm -hmm. but yeah definitely uh definitely a little weird considering everything yeah like, however i think it was i think it was handled decently yeah i agree i think there's a decent handling on it i think there are some parts where they could have just made the boundaries a little bit clearer and i if it were me with the last scene i'm gonna skip ahead a bit with the last scene where he's, like, letting forth all of his emotions, everything that he's held, like, pent up, and she runs, and she's crying, and she hugs him, and she says, you know, you help me get through all of this, I just maybe wouldn't have had the hug. Like, if she had just, like, cried with him and said I, like, said something along the lines of, like, obviously not this because I'm not a script writer, but, you know, I empathize with you, with you, 
and you've actually really helped me. You've, you've, you know, uh, I appreciate you and I believe in you. And like, I still feel like they could have got the emotional thing. I just feel like the, like them holding each other in the end did push it into romance territory as opposed to like her having followed through with those boundaries that she had only just previously established. You know what I mean? I will... I feel like I'm treading very strange mm-hmm. waters here because I am going to disagree with okay. you on that fact due to I think the emotional weight would have been different, especially considering, again, I don't know how the subbed version of it came across. Mm-hmm. However, I know in the dub, like with that just absolute amount of weight that her voice actress like put into it. Mm-hmm. I genuinely think the emotion would not have come across without the hug. And I think given the context of everything, like, I don't think that she necessarily had those same feelings for him. No. So, therefore, I I can see how it could potentially be misconstrued. However, I didn't look at it as a romantic embrace in any shape of the imagination just due to the overall context and how like the weight of the scene felt Mm -hmm. so i i think it was definitely necessary otherwise everything would have just felt very disjointed i can see what you mean yeah i feel like maybe if there had been things leading up to that situation where there had been i okay i guess okay small signs of her establishing boundaries throughout the rest of the film leading up to that point would have probably made me feel more comfortable with it. So, yeah, because, like, she does establish a boundary right before that of, like, you know, I'm leaving and you're, like, a kid. You know, she does establish that. I'm your teacher. And then he leaves, obviously, and then they have that emotional moment. If, If that had been her reaffirming boundaries as opposed to establishing boundaries, maybe I wouldn't have had such a weird feeling with it. I don't know. I think, I think the thing that I'm getting at with this film is that I don't really know how I feel about it in regards to it, because I do like the fact that they are portraying real teenage emotions of a teenager having a crush on an adult. I do like the fact that she does establish those boundaries with him. I'm your teacher, call me your teacher, like, call me sensei. And um, I'm leaving. Like, I'm not going to be here. And I like the way that the film ends with them being on their own separate paths. I don't like how it's advertised as a romance, like the genre is a romance. I don't like how those boundaries aren't established until the very, very end of the film. And so throughout, up until that point, for me, the entire time watching the film, I was sitting on the border of, is this creepy or not? Is this creepy or not? You know, is she going to return his feelings or is it just purely one-sided? Because the story is only really told from his side. So you don't know if she's returning those feelings. And so I was kind of watching the whole film, like, waiting for something icky to happen. You know? (laughs) Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I I 100% agree. I think for me... And again, I don't know if it was because of the party environment that I kind of brought about with there being a lot of us watching it and also kind of discussing it as we went along. Mm -hmm. But I didn't necessarily have an issue with that type of quote unquote setup because I don't think I necessarily saw it as that. I didn't, I paid no attention to how the film was marketed. I didn't even watch a trailer for it. I was literally, whenever you asked, I was like, okay, Makoto Shinkai, let's figure out something. And then I was like, huh, Garden of Words, haven't seen that one yet. Yeah. Whereas I was almost leaning towards five centimeters a second until mm-hmm. I realized five centimeters a second is, I believe, divided into three separate mm-hmm. short films. Mm-hmm. But I think they're like 30 minutes-ish, so it would have been like twice the length of this one mm-hmm. altogether, maybe. Some shit like that. Anyway, so... I don't think I paid attention to how it was marketed. I didn't pay attention to the genre or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I don't think I necessarily had issues with any of the quote unquote, like romance part of Mm -hmm. it, because I never really saw it as that. I saw it more along the lines of, I think I took it more at face value of like, you can see like him developing a relationship kind of sort of. This is going to be a really bad example, but kind of mm-hmm. similarly to Violet Evergarden, for instance, mm-hmm. because of how, like, as a teenager, they are still emotionally vulnerable. Therefore, they have a tendency to kind of grow attached 
two mm-hmm. figures that they spend a lot of times with, and therefore they don't fully understand their emotions going into those types of situations. Yeah. And so, therefore, was it love? Maybe, but also... Could it have been something else? And that's just what they called it. Also, maybe. Like, I don't know. No, I completely agree. I really, really think from his end, it was admiration and and company and, and like, just, like, all of these positive emotions that he hadn't really been able to put to anyone other than, like, his older brother. But obviously, this is a very different circumstance to his older brother. And so he's having all of these, like, feelings of warmth and friendliness and and at 15 16 you know those are very easily even as an adult they're very easily you know mistaken for feelings of romance yeah because he he had no one like we established earlier Mm. mom not there dad who fucking knows Mm. where dad is and his older brother's kind of a dick bag yeah was yeah i I understand like typical like sibling dynamics so i kind of get that however those dynamics typically die off whenever siblings aren't together anymore whenever they're having a serious conversation with like their partner or someone else along those lines Mm -hmm. and him still ragging on his brother and like giving him shit over wanting to be a shoemaker even though his brother's partner was like very interested in him making shoes and him still ragging him over it and saying that he wouldn't like make anything out of that Mm -hmm. so therefore i think he kind of like, just having somebody listen to him and kind of accept him for who he is, even though he didn't understand the true dynamic between the two, and she kind of hid that from him. Yeah. So, I I don't know. Like, it's a very, very strange situation. However, I, I don't know. I guess a lot of it just kind of depends on the, like, whatever word I'm trying to think of, of, like, whatever your thoughts are going into this will kind yeah. of have the ability to kind of misconstrue. Yeah, I'm very, very interested to watch it dubbed because I feel like there could genuinely just be a translation thing going on here that, like, the tone in which you read subtitles isn't the same tone in which things are spoken, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'd be very interested to to watch it dubbed and see if uh, I get the same feeling of, of, I'm not even going to say it was like a feeling of ick, it was a feeling of apprehension of like the next scene, I was like is something creepy going to happen and I'm just waiting for that moment throughout the the entirety of the film of like when are the boundaries going to be crossed and they never actually are fully but it just doesn't ever feel safe, I guess, whilst watching it, or at least from my watching experience it never felt safe of like, yeah, this is an entirely comfortable relationship that they have, you know Mm -hmm. um and to be honest, that feeling of of ick could just be self projection, um, or it could it could genuinely be just like my interpretation, the the mood that I'm in today when I watched it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'd be interested in watching it again and hearing what you guys thought of it, like especially any female watches. Um, I don't like maybe there's a thing because I guess like. It's a thing that girls are taught to be wary of male teachers, which is so dumb because there are some fantastic male teachers out there. Um, I've actually had a couple really, really wonderful male teachers. And it's uh, a, there's a huge shortage of male teachers in primary and elementary schools where there are kids with no proper male figures in their lives, but they don't get those roles because of bad reputations. Like, this is a thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's like a thing. So maybe I'm just more conscious of it than than other viewers would be. I don't know. Anyways, let me know what your thoughts are. Our next part of the storyline, though, is her storyline with um, her having uh, severe anxiety and stuff, which has caused her taste and that kind of thing to change. And uh, that's stemming from uh, being bullied at school. Yeah, because she was having false allegations levied against her. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that kind of caused her to keep ditching school and then therefore that's how she ended up at the park and then initially or sorry eventually ended up resigning from her role at the school and moving back home however in the time in between is where she met our main character and then kind of all that started forming from that perspective yeah yeah um can we talk about how fucking adorable the shoes he made for her were? I know. I like and how pissed lot. I am that she never got those. Right? 
Like, those were nice. I would have them. I would wear them. I wouldn't wear them, but they were nice. You would wear them for cosplay. Don't even lie. Uh, you know what? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if those could somehow be made in my size, I would rock those They bitches. absolutely can be made in your size. I mean, they were handmade, so probably. Yeah. There, probably there are very, very, very high heels in your size, and I know that for a fact. Stunning I can believe it. shoes. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. But I want them to be handmade. I want them to be made. A lot of them probably will be. admiration. Like, very expensive, handmade, good quality. Oh, I don't I don't doubt that in yeah. the slightest. Because, again, people with my size feet, we, we pay more for shit. Yeah. I know that from my length of legs. Uh, uh. Being tall sucks. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, also, um, I don't understand why men's trousers have length differences, but ladies' trousers don't. Apparently, we're all the same height. Yeah, I don't understand that either. No. <laughs> like, y'all just have one size on your pants. We have two. We have width and length. Yeah, we just have width. Shit makes no sense. Yeah, and what else doesn't make sense is that sometimes Pockets. you'll notice that the length changes depending on the width. So if you're smaller in width, they're shorter in length. And if you're bigger in width, they're longer in length. Because only, like, wider width people can have long legs. Like, what? what is the logic? It it literally makes no sense. Female fashion in general makes no sense to me whenever it comes to, like, overall sizing and all of that. Like, mm-hmm. none of it is remotely accurate in any way, shape, form, or fashion, and it's ridiculous. I would even take inches. I'm at the point where I would take inches over centimeters, or, like, anything at this point, because whatever system they're using, which is neither inches nor centimeters, doesn't make sense. Yeah, it... it fucking stupid i hate it uh, anyways rant aside. <laughs> uh, but it's nice to have callback rants though because this isn't the first time we've sit here and riffed on female fashion <laughs> it's so dumb it's i, just I feel like dumb. we have this rant once a year at this point it's our annual fashion rant specifically yeah. about female fashion sizes just like we riff on fashion, we riff on schools, yeah. like, it it never fails. We always have callback conversations. Yeah, yeah. God, I love it. Anyway, what do you give it? I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. Oh, I thought you were going to rate it lower, and then I was going to sit here and have to beg you to watch the dub and then re-rate it. Yeah, the reason why is uh, taking 2.5 off for confusion. Uh-huh. Uh, because I don't know how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. I feel like if the roles, like if the if the genders were reversed, this would. I don't think like this film would ever even be made. You know, of the two characters, I feel like that would automatically put it into huge creep territory. And I'm trying to figure out how I feel about that because I don't. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. What mm-hmm. I do know though is visually, it's stunning. I also know that the sound in it is incredible and the music in it is incredible. So that's why I'm at a seven and a half. I also really enjoyed the shoot. Oh, both Brad and I had a <laughs> foot fetish thought. Oh, I thought you were about to say something else. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, I thought we were. <laughs> I thought you were going to leave the thought part off on it. I was like, <laughs> okay, no. here we go. <laughs> No, no, when we were watching this, Brad was like, oh my god, uh, he, I, Brad sent me a message of a Discord, and it was like, oh my god, I cried. And I sent one back, and I was like, I was just focused on a foot fetish the whole time. <laughs> but no, like, me and the people that I watched it with all pretty much said it at the same time. We we're like, foot fetish much? Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, again, nothing wrong with that no. by any means, but that the was just literally the first thing. Fascinating. Yeah, and like seeing, I guess, getting like a small taste into shoemaking mm. in a way and like seeing how, I don't know, I kind of had the same fascination with that as I did with Dress Up Darling and how cosplay was made and yeah, like, getting like an idea of all the like different kind of intricacies that go into it. I wish they had focused on that. I agree. Just a little bit more, like just on the making part a yeah. little bit more. Because, again, if we watched this before Dress Up Darling, I probably wouldn't have thought too much about it. But now, anytime I see clothing or anything like that getting made in anime, the Dress Up Darling 
lover in me is like, give me more. Like, I want to learn more about this. It just gave me that much of a, like, overall appreciation for the amount of work that goes into stuff like that, especially in anime. Yeah, yeah. And Old Fashioned Cobblers is a dying business, but it Mm -hmm. shouldn't be. Because we are a very wasteful society, and just getting your, your shoes resold when they're perfectly good leather or rehealed is a very reasonable thing to do, and it saves you a lot of money and in the long run, and saves you foot pain from having to break in new shoes. Hell yeah. Yeah. Go to cobblers. They're good, good business. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I liked that aspect as well. I thought that was very unique and mm. cool, and I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. What do you rate it? I think I can give it an eight and a half Mm -hmm. because I, I don't know. Like there were definitely some like weird things done with boundaries and whatnot. So I do, I kind of get that mainly just from the lack of established boundaries from the offset. And Mm -hmm. again, that withholding of information, but I also realized that if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have had the character development that we did get out of it. So I don't know. It's a very strange dynamic, but still strange nonetheless. Yeah. However, anytime something can make me cry, and especially, like, it had nothing to do with the story. Mm -hmm. Like, the story itself was good, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. If the story were better than what it was, I probably would have gave this shit a 10 out of 10, like I do everything else that makes me cry. Yeah. But what drug me out of it was the voice acting. Yeah. The teacher's voice acting was just so phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Just, it... It brought me to tears. Like, I felt every bit of that emotion. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that may have been, like, a slight relatability standpoint of, like, how, like, needing someone to kind of help you grow and push past, like, your darkest points. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like there was something to kind of, like, get behind on that that kind of resonated with me. But just the overall, just emotion behind it was just some of the most absolutely gripping gut-wrenching crying that i think i've ever heard Mm -hmm. and it just oh my god it just tore my heart to shreds and i was like this is phenomenal voice acting on this for a dub is 10 out of 10 oh interesting okay yeah cool so yeah like just overall solely because of that i can give it an eight and a half if the story was better definitely 10 out of 10 yeah I just think small improvements would have made this story so much better. And that's just being a little bit clearer on those boundaries from her perspective. You could even still have him, as the teenager, be unsure of of his own boundaries and testing those waters because that's what teenagers do. I just wanted to see a little bit from her end, a little bit more from her end of just... um, like, things that maybe adults would pick up on as her establishing boundaries, but don't quite translate into the teenage world. So it, it so in her mind, she's set up clear boundaries, but he doesn't see them as boundaries. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But also, from that perspective, though, you still have, like, this was still kind of, sort of, like, it wasn't early on in Shinkai's career by any means. Mm. But still, like, he was still kind of, I guess, honing his craft in that sort of sense. Yeah. To where... Following this up three years later was your name, which yeah. is an absolute masterpiece mm-hmm. as far as animation is concerned, and is to this day still considered like one of the best animated pieces in history and one of the best overall story pieces. Mm-hmm. In history. And your name is still a ten out of ten in my book. Mm-hmm. So again, it's still kind of It still might have been, like, a feeling out process. Because, again, this was also, like, one of his first full-length films in, I think, six or seven years. Mm -hmm. Because he had one project before that, before, uh, or in between five centimeters per second, and then that one. So a lot of it still could have been growing pains and him kind of learning how to, like, fully work with an animation studio rather than, like, trying to do as much of it himself. Mm-hmm. So there, there's a lot of factors that kind of played into this or could have played into this. Because I watched a video essay on Makoto Shinkai and that kind of his like growing pains and whatnot, trying to learn how to like give up, fuck, words, learning how to like give up complete control just so he could actually get his projects out and be able to like fully push things to the boundaries that he wanted to push them. Right, yeah. 
But yeah, there there could have been a lot of factors behind it. But either way, great things were made before. This was still great. It just needed some minor tweaking here or there. Yeah. And then everything else following that has been just an absolute masterpiece. And I could not be more excited for the next Makoto Shinkai work to come out later this year. I am beyond ready to go shell out a shit ton of money to go take a bunch of my friends to the theater and watch the latest film because I am ready to have my heart torn out once more. Mm, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I do think some very minor tweaking on this could turn this film. It's one of those things that I would be very interested in in, you know, sometimes like filmmakers do re-edits and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um if he did one, I would rec- I would like to see something on this. I would like to see this remastered mm. and like brought to the current day with this current animation style. Mm-hmm. Because it's gorgeous as it is, but could you imagine this with we- with a uh, fucking weathering with use animation budget? Yeah, agreed. Like, yeah. holy shit. Yeah, and I'm actually very, very curious as to your guys at home what your interpretations of the story was. You know, when you watched it, did you feel the same way as me? Did you not see it anywhere in the romance category? How do you feel about it being kind of marketed as a romance? I'm very, very curious about this because this one really feels like on the borderline for me and i'm not quite sure which way i'm leaning so i want to i want to pick your guys's brain yeah so be sure to hit us up in those dms on bnb anime on instagram and twitter you can literally find us there i end up responding to pretty much all the dms which we do get quite often so those that do actually dm us we appreciate it like i seriously screen all of those and enjoy hearing people's thoughts on it there are times whenever we are often corrected yeah. On things. So, uh, again, call me out on my bullshit. Please. I want to learn. Blue wants to learn. Like, that's why we do this. Like, we have both grown so much since starting this podcast. So, it, it's part of the fun. Yeah, fully. Yeah. We, we, I've said it before and I'll say it many, many times again, but we know nothing about films or anime or anything officially. We just do this for funsies. So, <laughs> so if you guys have any knowledge, we're all ears to hear about it because yeah we're just two idiots that with microphones that's it that that's quite literally it no no other feet to stand on other than that yeah so but yeah we we really appreciate y'all listening to us and then giving us feedback yeah it's, great. it's awesome mm-hmm. also more places to give feedback youtube comments if you're listening to this on youtube mm-hmm. you're a week behind so you should you should you know go follow us on spotify and apple if you want you know other places to listen to us ramble just earlier but also youtube great because we got fancy thumbnails and shit now i don't i'm still learning how to do things so don't judge me too harshly but I, i'm figuring it out slowly surely I think they're maybe great. they're great big preach big preach i appreciate it we also got a website the uh, bnbanime.com where you can find a whole lot of shit about us about the podcast about friends of the podcast yes all those types of shenanigans yeah yeah uh and if you like brad and you want to know more about him uh you should check out his twitch at brad Cost gaming you should also uh uh yeah like go on his instagram and stuff and see if you can hop into his discord it's because he sometimes has watch parties which is fun um so yeah that's a fun time you should hang out with him and um i have instagram as well um at blue lavender stm and uh takes rock at blue lavender i don't really post on either of them super much but i'm trying to i just am bad in general <laughs> but i do have uh as something that is consistent an etsy shop which is blue lavender crafts where i make bookmarks and um, even custom ones. So if you want a custom bookmark, check out my Etsy shop. Yeah, how's that going? You still getting orders? I am getting orders. Hell yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I highly recommend it. I have mine. It's beautiful. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Cannot, cannot recommend it more. If you like reading, or even if you don't like reading, if you want a good gift for someone else, you know what? I'll record you a plug. <laughs> oh. I'll I'll make like a whole sponsored bit just for an episode oh. of the podcast. I'll do it. <laughs> totally not sponsored by Blue Land Cross because she can't afford it. No, Ta-da! no, 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 no. This episode of BNV Anime is sponsored by Blue Lavender Crafts. Do you like bookmarks? Do you like any sort of plants and or plant based things? God damn it, outside! I am being important right now. I am recording a bit. <laughs> Oh, this is all just pure shenanigans, and I love it. It is. It is. 
Oh, good. That everything? Next week, we'll be recording something at some point, and you'll enjoy it, because that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to say it would be Anohana, but at this point, who who fucking knows? The sca- the- I don't know how to... Yeah. Card is always subject to change around here. <laughs> yeah, I, it's... Uh, life is hard. Anime sometimes is very draining to watch when it's sad. Yeah, but we'll we'll get something up, I promise. Maybe. Who knows? We will. we will have an episode. Yes, yes. Something will go up. <laughs> Guaranteed. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Thank y'all so much for listening. Blue and I greatly appreciate it. We'll catch y'all next week for whatever the fuck we're recording. But until then, we'll catch y'all next time. Bye-bye. Bye.